Hi, I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times. It's Friday, September the 5th, and I've got news from Arkansas. The first is a big Republican flip-flop on the minimum wage. <coughs> Excuse me, the top two candidates on the ballot for Republicans, uh, Tom Cotton, the candidate for U.S. Senate, and Asa Hutchinson, the candidate for governor, after months of being non-committal or outright in opposition, as Hutchinson was, to a proposal to raise a minimum wage, now say they'll vote for it. This uh, measure has just been certified for the ballot. That has something to do with their change of heart. It also has something to do with polls showing these things are incredibly popular with voters. Asa Hutchinson has the biggest load to carry. He said repeatedly this was a bad idea. He said even that it was a terrible idea to raise a minimum wage above the federal minimum wage, which this proposal would do in its first year. said it would be bad for Arkansas's economy. Now he says he's going to vote for it. These are not exactly profiles in political courage. Elsewhere in political news, a new poll from CNN shows Tom Cotton with a 49 to 47 two-point lead over Mark Pryor in the race for Senate. This is within the margin of Erica. Stat statistical dead heat, but good news still for Tom Cotton. The bad news for Mark Pryor in this poll is a, is a somewhat unbelievable figure. If there is a gender gap, women tend to favor Mark Pryor. Uh, white males tend to favor Tom Cotton. But there was this finding. Tom Cotton has an 11 percent margin among white women. This happens to coincide with a great piece in Huffington Post today by Adrian Elrod, an Arkansas native who now works for Democratic Party causes. And she's written about all the reasons why women should vote against Tom Cotton. This is not any sort of visceral thing. It's vote record on issue after issue, whether it's Paycheck Fairness, Violence Against Women Act, Reproductive Rights, Medical Care, home economy issues. Tom Cotton is against all the sorts of issues that tend to contribute to favorable votes among women voters. Not so far. If Mark Pryor can't close this gap among women voters, he will lose. But with pieces like Adrian Elrod, maybe he has hope. I've got further reporting on the Arkansas blog today about the tragic death Wednesday of Heather Cater, killed in a parking lot outside Walgreens as she was heading home from work by a drug suspect driving too fast and uncarefully in a black Tahoe. I've uh, asked questions of the Sheriff's Office of how this chase over what was a misdemeanor marijuana transaction occurred and also how it is that the Sheriff's Office is investigating a case that happened within the city of Little Rock. I've got answers to those questions from Sheriff Doc Holliday. I think you'd be interested in reading them. News from Saline County today, I'm told a judge has struck down a local option alcohol election for the ballot in Saline County. But not to worry, even if that stands, there's still a statewide wet election in which beer drinkers can vote for their favorite form of alcohol in all 75 counties. Uh, last night, business as usual in Little Rock, the Planning Commission approved a mega gas station out on Highway 10 at uh, Taylor Loop Road. Not, not a very good place for one, but it's going to go forward. I think the city board is most likely to approve it despite strong neighborhood opposition. And finally, I'd send you back to the Arkansas blog for an interesting story. There's a lawsuit heading to the U.S. Supreme Court by an inmate, a life inmate, in the Arkansas prison system who says he should be allowed to wear a beard because he's a Muslim and it's part of his religion. The state of Arkansas is fighting this fiercely, says it's a security issue. The interesting thing that's turned up in a New York Times story is that the head of the state prison system apparently did not tell the truth in sworn testimony provided in this suit. He claimed something had happened with a hidden razor blade that just wasn't true, and the state attorney general's office was forced to amend its complaint. Pretty embarrassing for the state of Arkansas for people who are in charge of the justice system. With that, I'll leave you to your weekend and a, perhaps a Razorback win. I'm Max Brantley. See you next week.